What's up, what's going on legends? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking Modern Warfare Zombies and I'm bringing you guys yet another informational video. This time we completed 100 Mega Abominations. If you guys did watch a more recent one I did, I did 100 Tier 1 Bounties and 100 Tier 2 Bounties. We recorded all of the rewards we got along the way. That way we could actually see a rough estimate of what percentage we had of getting certain rewards upon completing again the Tier 1 and Tier 2 Bounties. Nothing about this data is 100% accurate for the simple fact that Obviously, the rates are going to be slightly different just based on RNG, but it does give us a rough idea, again, of what we can expect from completing those certain contracts. So again, I wanted to do that for the Mega Abomination. So today we are talking about our results from the 100 Mega Abominations that I did complete. Now, I do want to mention that I am planning on completing 100 Tier 3 bounties as well. However, I am waiting for the new mid-season update so we get the access to the increased stash size, so that I actually have a lot easier time making it into Tier 3 getting into those bounties and being able to complete them and recording those rewards. So again, today we are talking about our mega abomination. So I am going to go ahead and throw this up. So if you guys aren't excited about the data driven informational video, this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you guys did like the one I did the other day, this is going to be along the same lines. Now, again, I probably will revisit this information alongside the tier three contracts because they kind of are neck and neck being the mega abominations are fined in the high threat zone. So let's go ahead and dive into it here. As you guys can see, we did 100 mega abominations. I actually did a little bit more than the 100 this time, although I am going to only use for this video the information for the first 100, and then we'll continue to track our progress as we go. Now, if you guys are interested in seeing me kind of get this information, we are actually filling in this spreadsheet over at twitch.tv slash Earl Shatter during the streams. And I'm also, of course, making sure to record the data that I have from the matches I do for videos. That way we have each and every one of the contracts or things that we complete. We actually skipped anything that could potentially be a good reward that could add to the loot pool here that we are recording. So I actually do my best to make sure we don't miss any rewards along the way. Now, as we scroll through here, you guys can see there's a couple lines that we did get read. Weirdly enough, there were a couple of mega abominations where we didn't receive any rewards at all, but it was fairly, you know, inconsistent that that happened. I think it only happened two, maybe three times. Once we actually passed over the 100 mega abominations, we did get a third one. So maybe 2% of them total didn't give us a reward. I will say, though, now we're going to get to the spicy part of the actual sheet. I'm going to do us a favor and hide some of this information so we don't have to look at all of it. Boom, there we go. So I will make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see. This is the fun part here. So we were able to complete the 100 mega abominations, like I said, and it has a very similar chart to what we did for tier one and tier two bounties, essentially. This one has some pretty interesting results. I do think that this is way better as far as the balancing for what you are doing than you do get for the tier one and tier two bounties or completing the contracts. For the uncommon tools, great to see we got 0%. I don't know if there's anybody down in the comment section below that can let me know if they've ever gotten one of these, but I'm pretty sure this isn't even possible to get as a reward for eliminating a mega abomination. Now, it is also important to note these are just regular mega abominations going around the zone, so they would be considered specials, not elites. So I'm not grabbing bounties in order to get these mega abominations. Now, the rare tool percentage was fairly high. It was almost one in every five. Our epic tool percentage was a lot lower than I expected, but it was pretty good. I think 12 out of 100 really isn't that bad of odds, and there was even times where I got back-to-back -back epic tools. And I think even one time I got an epic and a rare at the exact same time. So Essentially, you have pretty decent odds, at least of getting an epic tool, but definitely of getting a rare tool. So if you're in some sort of situation where you really needed a rare tool or you were hoping to get rare tools or epic tools for another match, maybe fighting Mega Abominations would be something you could do for a majority of your run. You might actually have some pretty decent success on getting those rewards. Now, the legendary tool I was only able to get one time, making it about a 1%. Again, this is a very limited loot pool, so I only did 100 at this point. And we could do a thousand, you could do 10,000. It would give us a much more refined result. But out of the first 100, we were only able to get one legendary tool. I do, I do think that this is just a little bit low. Make this a little bit higher in this zone, whether or not it's just for eliminating the mega abominations. I would like to see this at like the epic tools at like maybe 17, 15 to 20% would be cool. The rare tools, you can even leave it around this just to help inflate the loot pool. I'm not, I'm not even opposed to that. Make the legendary tools like maybe five in every 100 or three in every 100. Give us some sort of realistic possibility of getting them because then you could actually take those into your next match, use that legendary tool, set yourself up for more success, go in, fight more mega bombs, go into the dark ether, just overall make your experience a little bit easier going into your next run. Now let's go ahead and get into the Ethereum crystals because I thought this was kind of interesting also. Despite having pretty good rates amongst the tools, we didn't have crazy good rates amongst the crystals, 
getting 10% chance of having a pack one crystal. Now, I don't really think that you need this to be possible, maybe like a 5% chance just again to inflate the loot pool. But I think getting a pack one crystal or completing something in the high threat zone, especially a mega bomb, even though there are ways to farm it, everybody has different struggles or eliminates different amounts of mega bombs throughout their, their playtime. I think that it would be more beneficial to kind of keep this number low, give us a higher number of refined crystals as I was only able to get four. I will say this rate is pretty good, but maybe one in 10. I mean, 10 mega bombs in a run would be pretty good. The most that we were able to do on stream was 14, and we were having troubles with them disappearing, in some cases, even getting them to spawn. And even when I was doing my runs, I was kind of limiting myself because I was trying to stay in the tier two zone, fighting the mega bombs. That way it was easier to record my results. Now, again, we have a very similar issue that we do with the legendary tool. The flawless Ethereum crystal actually only dropped for us one time. I am thankful that we got the one, but one in a hundred is very, very low as you can actually purchase these in game by going to the tier three zone. And if you have the discounts, obviously it's a little bit cheaper and you can go ahead and pack one, two and three. So in my opinion, getting a pack a punch level three crystal in this game is just entirely too rare. I don't think I've even seen 10 in my entire 600 plus deployments. I think that's kind of insane. Granted, you would probably have a lot better chance of getting this in the dark ether. People just let me know down in the comment section below what your experience is. But again, I think these are just a little bit too rare. We should give this at least a, maybe a 3%. That way, three in every 100 mega bombs that we eliminate, we have a chance to get these. Because it would be cool to go into another run after actually farming some mega bombs and getting a pack three crystal, being able to go right back to that zone or again, Going to the dark ether. Now we've covered the ether tools and the Ethereum crystals. Now I do think across the board so far, this is a really good way to farm some of these items. Although some of the rates are low, you do have a better chance of getting it through these and they can be done a lot faster just depending on again your RNG of the mega bomb spawning, what you're using to eliminate them and also your strategy on doing so. Again, I could actually do a video on mega abomination strats. If you guys would like to see that, let me know down in the comment section below and I can do that in a future one. Now let's go ahead and dive into the three plate large backpack and two plate medium backpack scenario here. Now the two plate medium backpack is pretty much zero. I don't even know if it's possible or if it's in the loot pool across the entirety of our recording of these rewards. And as far back as I remember, I don't actually think I've gotten medium backpacks or even two platers from Mega Abominations. I think that just might not be something in the loot pool and I'm okay with that because with our large backpack and three plate vest, we actually have really good chance of getting either of them or both. I think in some cases I did a little bit of some number crunching before. I don't have it built into the sheet yet. Maybe I'll do that when we compare the tier three zone to the mega abominations. But essentially when it comes to getting a three plate and a large backpack, I think I got that out of eight mega abomination eliminations. So pretty much an 8% chance that we actually got both the three plate and the large backpack upon completing Mega Abominations, which isn't really that bad. I mean, you do have 30% chance of getting a three plate. You have a 26% chance of getting a large backpack. You basically almost have a one in three chance for that three plate like we're talking about and almost a one in four chance for the large backpack. And then on top of that, an 8% chance that you'll even get both. So if you are looking for a three plate and a large backpack and you are suited up to take on a Mega Abomination or you have a good strategy to do so, you would have a pretty good chance of getting three plate and large backpack pretty quickly making the rest of your, of your run just significantly easier. Now, I will say the ammo mod amount was pretty high for this. There were even some cases where I was getting multiple, being that it was pretty much almost one in four that we were getting those. Ammo mods at the point you get into the high threat zone, I don't think should be as high of a drop rate. Maybe if you actually reduce this rate a little bit and increase some of these other rates just slightly, it could even be better than what it currently is. And I don't really think that the loot pool for the Mega Abominations upon eliminating them is really all that bad, but I do think it could use a little bit of an adjustment as long as you are adjusting, obviously, the other zones and the contracts along with it. You can't just pretty much just change one thing in this game as far as the rewards are concerned because so much inconsistency happens from Tier 1, 2, and 3 and even obviously completing these Mega Abominations. I think as far as the perks are concerned, we find a pretty good balance being that we almost get one in every four Mega Abominations that we eliminate. I think that's kind of fair. Again, you don't want the loot pool to be so little that you have insane rates of getting these other items. It would be great if we could take out three Mega Bombs and get a pack three crystal every single time to some degree, but it would also be kind of disappointing and take away the, the challenge of the game if we made it too easy. So I do think it is okay to have it about 27%. I think the ammo mod thing is a little less of something that you would need in this loot pool just for the simple fact that there are nine perks in the game more than likely you don't have all of them by them dropping you're not necessarily in a bad spot and again you can continue to kind of build off of where you're at it could be an upgrade whatever perk drops maybe you get a jug you didn't have it maybe you get a speed coal you didn't have it 
Perks are generally a lot more beneficial than ammo mods. Now, I will say this is interesting. You have a 0% chance, or at least I did, of them dropping self-revives. Now, typically, when you go and fight Mega Abominations, you should at least be equipped with one. But at least now you will know that if you're going in to fight Mega Abominations, it's almost unlikely, basically impossible, less than 1% that you're going to be able to get a self-revive. So if you go down, lose your self-revive, you might want to leave that Mega Abomination fight, go over to your nearest buy station, purchase another one, do something else to, to gather yourself another self revive and then come back to the scenario. Now, when it comes to kill streaks, again, I did mention this in my other video. This is pretty much every streak that isn't a jug because otherwise it would have just inflated the sheet too much. I would have too many options. So although the precision and the mortar are both technically epic rarity, we're just including them in the regular kill streaks. Basically, one in every five of the mega bombs we were able to drop a streak. Some cases they even dropped two. I think that's pretty fair and consistent considering that some of the streaks are actually pretty beneficial. Maybe you get a free sentry gun. I think that's probably the most reasonable streak outside of the juggernaut for me to be using. So you guys would have a pretty decent uh, chance of getting those. The last two things we're going to cover is the wonder weapons and the juggernaut. Now the juggernaut suit will cover first since we already did just talk about the kill streaks. We were actually able to get two jugs within the time period that we did the 100 mega bombs. I thought that was pretty fair. The juggernaut is rare. So are the you know other things that are in the same loot pool. Technically a, a legendary tool is along the same rarity and a refined ethereum crystal had better odds although similar rarity i think that is pretty fair two jugs out of 100 it's not going to give you insane odds i mean if i kind of combined that with the kill streaks it would have only increased the number you have a decent chance of getting a streak not really a good chance you're going to get a jug but it is possible now the last thing i do want to talk about is going to be those wonder weapons we actually got four wonder weapons throughout our journey of eliminating the 100 mega bombs and i will say that that is pretty fair i mean i wouldn't expect us to get one every every other mega bomb or even all that often and i think we you do get them it can be kind of exciting maybe it drops a scorcher you're going to use that to get around the map or maybe you get one of the weapon cases the wonder weapon cases instead you use that to hold on to your next match depending on your scenario i did get one weapon case and the other three weapons that i got were all the actual weapons so it is pretty cool essentially it does give you a good possibility of getting a wonder weapon and there isn't really that many other ways that you have good chances within the regular map to get those so i think Eliminating Mega Bombs might actually be your best opportunity within the map to get a free Wonder Weapon. Now, this was a lot of fun to gather the 100 Mega Abominations information. I think this is a much better and more balanced loot system than the ones we had in Tier 1 and Tier 2. But as expected, it is in the high threat zone, so it should be a little bit better. I will be interested to see once we have that Tier 3 information also how it will compare to the Mega Abominations. Because I'm just going to give you guys my personal opinion at this point. I do think it is a very good chance that the Mega Abominations, at least as far as staying within the map of Urzikstan, will be the best place to go to get rewards. As long as you're able to suit yourself up enough, which in this case, currently using the ISO Hemlock won't take you all that much, you should be able to make your way over to that, battle a few Mega Abominations, and you should have significantly higher chances of getting some of these rewards than you did doing any of the contracts. I honestly think at this point, if I was looking for a way to kind of gear myself up for future runs, this would be my go-to. I would gear up enough to go fight the Mega Abominations. I would farm them for the entirety of the run. I would see what I get. I would carry my backpack into the next run. I would use what I need to to go back to farm the Mega Abominations. And then you could have a pretty good looking stash within a reasonable amount of time. But that is going to be all the information for what our 100 Mega Abominations at this point. Hopefully this information helps you guys kind of understand what we're looking at when it comes to completing these things. Again, it will paint more of a clear picture once we have Tier 3 kind of mixed in. I do think the Tier 3 zone, as far as the contracts are concerned, are going to give us a much worse loot pool than the Mega Abominations because I already know for sure you can get a green tool in those. I already know for sure you can get some of these other items that were pretty much at zero when we did those megas. That's going to wrap things up for us here. Let me know down in the comment section below what you like about these videos, what you would like to see me do differently in order to make them shorter, more informational, anything like that. I am always open to criticism and things that we can do to improve these types of videos. That's going to wrap things up for us here. Thank you guys for all the support, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.